50 cells. In fact, a recent survey revealed that almost 95% of women said it was the most important factor when buying a car. The latest line of defense when used with a seat belt is the airbag. In fact, it should be airbags plural. Driver, passenger, side, rear seat, and they're even considering pedestrian bags. But are they all they're made out to be? I don't know about you, but whenever I get into the car and I turn the ignition on, and I see the orange light illuminate that says the airbag is functioning, I always have that sneaking suspicion. Would the airbag really go off if I hit something? Well, the answer to that is not always. Two years ago, when travelling at about 45 miles an hour on the M5, Phil Egan hit a patch of black ice. Despite the extensive damage to his car, to his surprise, his airbag didn't fire. I was under the impression that it would go off, but looking back now, I think me and the majority of people are under this misconception with airbags that if you have this type of collision, they, they will go off, but in actual fact they won't. Fortunately, because he was wearing a seatbelt, Phil wasn't badly injured. But just how serious does an accident have to be before an airbag goes off? First, the car must be involved in a sufficiently violent accident for it to deploy. And secondly, uh, the impact needs to be from the front of the car between about 2 o'clock and about 10 o'clock. Yeah, because on that particular, looking at the photograph, it seemed to me that that was a front-on crash. Yes, it was probably, it was a glancing crash down this side against a, uh, a crash barrier and probably fell just outside the range. So how does the car know when to deploy the airbag? There are sensors which are hidden within the car so uh, they would be normally within the passenger compartment and uh, located uh, roughly in line with the passengers and they would uh, work out the change in velocity of the car and then if it was sufficiently violent enough shock then it would deploy. Basically an airbag is going to give pr protection to your face and neck and to a lesser extent your chest and so you only want it to deploy in an accident where your head would actually hit the steering wheel. I'll show you. In the United States, the public are more aware of airbags and the protection they offer due to greater pressure on car manufacturers to make vehicles safe. If at the same speed you hit something that's movable, your change in velocity is smaller and takes longer to occur because you keep moving after the crash. When airbags first hit the safety headlines, a lot of people were concerned that they might go off when you least expected them. In fact, you've got more chance of winning the lottery on a double rollover than your bag going off inadvertently. And when they do go off, it's quicker than a blink of an eye. It's only when you slow the process down 40 times you see what really happens. But how does it work? In your car, you have um, in the steering wheel what we would call the driver's side module. Behind there, you have an inflator and a bag that's folded. Once the sensor says that it's having an accident, um, it sends a signal to the inflator. The inflator burns sodium azide, produces nitrogen, the gas comes out of the inflator and fills the bag. But how important do you think airbags are? I would not get into a car without an airbag system. In a serious accident, airbags can undoubtedly save your life. But there can be side effects, as Gary Cannell found when his escort was in a five-car pileup. I had whiplash injuries and a broken vertebrae in my neck. I was taken to hospital and examined, and then it was noticed that I had a very red, inflamed and sore wrist. I was told that this was caused by a burn. It's not something that I was expecting. It was caused by the airbag going off, and I didn't know that they were activated by explosive. So who's most at risk? Well, small drivers who sit very close to the steering wheel, and belted people, and perhaps the most vulnerable group of all, infants in rear-facing baby seats. This is what can happen to them if a passenger airbag goes off. The force of the bag going off could easily break the neck of a baby in a rear-facing child seat. And although the industry does put warnings on cars, they're often not as obvious as they might be, and many people are quite unaware of the danger. Did you know that you shouldn't put a rear-facing baby seat in the front seat of a car, the passenger airbag? No, I didn't. No, I didn't at all. Do you know why? Oh, the sh I never even thought of it, really, but surely if it was rear-facing, it would just hit the back of the seat. Well, unfortunately, it would probably kill the baby if it if Really? It what, the force of it? Yes. No, I didn't realise. I'm glad I know now. Airbags are a supplementary restraint system. They were never meant to replace seat belts. There's no doubt they do save lives, but in some very rare cases, 
the Campbell Fatal. Manufacturers are now developing a smart system that eventually will be able to sense when someone's sitting very close to the steering wheel or there's a rear-facing baby seat on board and adjust the way the airbag operates accordingly. In the meantime, well, airbags are good, but they're not a panacea for all our motoring ills.